How's it going, everyone? We are coming up on the release of Dragon Age Veilguard, and if you want to talk about one game everybody is unanimously excited about, that people have no skepticism whatsoever, that there are no concerns on social media, and everybody is 100% sure that this game is going to be a 10 out of 10, Dragon Age the Veilguard is exactly that, you guys! No, I'm obviously joking. Dragon Age The Veil Guard is probably one of those games that has inspired the most amount of skepticism that I've ever seen out of a video game. In this video, I want to take a look at some of the key information that you should know about the game before you spend your 60, 70, or damn it, as much as $90 on the game. We're just going over some key information, the description of the game the various additions that you can buy, some of the specifications, and look, I am just the messenger, I am not here to tell you to buy the game, I am just here to tell you the key information. The last Dragon Age Veilguard video we uploaded was one of the most war zone comment section that I've ever seen. I get it, some of you guys aren't excited for the game, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just here to tell you the information that Bioware has set out for themselves. I will play it when it comes out, and when it does, I will give you guys my overall opinion of it. Am I skeptical as hell on this game? Absolutely. I am right there with you guys, but I will play it. I will see how it turns out, and uh, if you don't want to spend the $70, your boy... We'll play the game and uh, we'll let you know his thoughts on it. And we'll see how that turns out. This is going to be a very, very interesting game to keep an eye on the critical reception as well. For obvious reasons, as I am sure you guys are well aware. But we'll get right into this video and let's start off. Dragon Age The Veilguard is the latest Dragon Age title from One Bioware. A studio that I feel like so many of us were big fans of growing up. If you're my age in your late 20s or in your 30s, you grew up seeing Bioware at their absolute peak. For me, it was the Mass Effect trilogy, Dragon Age Origins, and I even enjoyed Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition. But their recent outings with Mass Effect Andromeda as well as Anthem have left a lot to be desired. I know a lot of people liked Andromeda from a gameplay standpoint, but Bioware games, a big element of it is its narrative. Andromeda left a lot to be desired, and it wasn't at the level of their other titles. I think everybody also wants to see Bioware return to form and become the Bioware of old. Is Dragon Age the Veil Guard going to offer you that? That remains to be seen, you guys, but let's go over the description of the game. Unite the Veil Guard and defy the gods in Dragon Age the Veil Guard, an immersive single-player RPG where you become the leaders other believed in. The key game highlights and notes save the world experience a dramatic single player campaign, unite the Veil Guard, recruit seven distinct companions, and become the leader. Be who you want to be, which uh, being who you want to be seems like something that we'll see how much they let you be who you want to be. Let's just put it that way. Enter a vibrant land of rugged wilderness, treacherous labyrinths, and glittering cities steeped in conflict and secret magics. Now a pair of corrupt ancient gods have broken free from centuries of darkness and are hell-bent on destroying the world. Thetas need someone you can count on. Rise as Rook, Dragon Age's newest hero. Be who you want to be and play how you want to play as you fight to stop the gods from blighting the world. But you can't do this alone. The odds are stacked against you. Lead a team of seven companions, each with their own rich story to discover, and together you will become the Veil Guard. Save a battered world. Enter Thetis, a vibrant world of rugged wilderness, treacherous labyrinth, and glittering cities. The world is teetering on a knife's edge while corrupt gods unleash havoc across the continent. Nations war and factions splinter. From the forest to the black alleys, this is a broken world and your actions will affect the fate of the world forever. Unite the the Veil Guard, a united team of seven companions, each with rich lives and deep backstories. These are characters to befriend and even fall in love with. Among them, an assassin, a necromancer, a detective, each and all bring their own expertise and unique abilities to the fight. You are never alone. Decide who to take into battle and together face down demons, dragons, and corrupt gods. And become the leader. Select from different races and combat classes. Customize your appearance. Choose your character's backstory and begin your journey as Rook, Dragon Age's newest hero. The choice is yours. On your adventure you'll gain new abilities and discover unique powerful artifacts to enhance your own combat style brace yourself as there are tough decisions to be made allies to inspire and a fight that needs every sword staff and bow you can muster Again, a big element of Dragon Age has always been the customization and leaving the options to your devices. And if Dragon Age The Veil Guard turns out how I personally want it to be, 
this would be vast and absolutely brimming with a lot of pathways and avenues for you to go. Whether that is actually properly executed remains to be seen, and seems to be one of the biggest points of skepticism for a lot of people. We'll see how all of that transpires. Select from different races and combat classes, customize your appearance, choose your character's backstory, and begin your journey as Rook, Dragon Age's newest hero. The choice is yours. On your adventures, you'll gain new abilities and discover unique, powerful artifacts to enhance your combat style. Brace yourself, there are tough decisions to be made, allies to inspire, and a fight that needs every sword and bow you can muster. Be who you want to be. Craft your personalized Rook with a robust character creator. Choose from a diverse set of appearance options from human, quinari, dwarf, and elf lineages. Choose your way to play. You'll be able to select from three classes that includes warrior, mage, and rogue, each with two distinct weapon types and unique abilities that you can select between experience new strategic depth as you combine fast-paced battle attacks and parries and dodges with the companion ability wheel to exploit enemy weaknesses and seize victory with a devastating combat combos. Customize a combat style that works the best for you. And throughout, you'll have deep RPG progression, level up your rook and companions with their own skill trees, choose perks and combat abilities as you climb towards more powerful specializations. That is all off the official description of the game. I do want to talk some key information points about this game that leaves me at least a little bit optimistic. And this is just things that a lot of games could be doing, and I think it would inspire a lot of optimism. Right off the top, over on PC, this is a game that will not require the EA Access Launcher. Rather, it is natively on Steam. You install the game on Steam, you boot it through Steam, and it runs on Steam. This is very similar to what EA did with the Dead Space remake, but it's not all of their games that run this actually... Uh, it's few and far between their games that are actual native on PC, so the fact that it is native on PC, that is great. On top of that, the game is fully Steam Deck verified, so if you want to take the game on the go on the deck, you'll have that option as well. On PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series, there will be a fidelity and performance mode, individually targeting 30 and 60 frames per second, uh, respectively. Dragon Age The Veil Guard will also be specifically enhanced for PlayStation 5 Pro, releasing on November the 7th, so that is right around the corner. And if you do want to play the game on the PS5 Pro, that option will be available to you. Noting we are excited to see how Dragon Age The Veil Guard will lean into the power of the PS5 Pro and how that unlocks for players. Whether you love deep progression, strategic combat, or diving into the lore of Dragon Age, you will immediately notice the improved experience with PS5 Pro. This is also utilizing the AI-based upscaler PSSR that will be bringing forth with the PlayStation 5 Pro. PS5 Pro will also feature enhanced ray tracing effects. PC requirements have also been illustrated, and they have six tiers of system requirements, minimum recommended ultra, and then three tiers of requirements with ray tracing turned on. To quickly go over them, if you're running this game at 1080p, 30fps at low settings, which is minimum, you're looking at an Intel Core i5 8400 or a Ryzen 3 3300X, 16 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA GTX 970 or an R9 290X, so throwback GPUs there. Recommended 1440p, 30fps or 1080p, 60fps at the high preset. You're looking at a 99900K, Ryzen 7 3700X, 16 gigs of RAM and an RTX 2070 or and Radeon RX 5700 XT. Then Ultra, that's for 4K 60 FPS Ultra settings, Core i9 12900K, Ryzen 9 7950X, 16 gigs of RAM, and then an RTX 4, uh, 4080 or a RX 7900 XT. The ray tracing requirements are much more beefy. I will leave them in the description box below if you do want to run the game with ray tracing turned on. As I'm recording this video, the preload is already live on Xbox Series X and S. It will be going live on October 29th for PlayStation 5 on PC. There will be no preload, but that is because the game will not feature third-party DRM such as Denuvo. They are letting you just download the game, none of that nonsense, so that prevents them doing a preload on PC, which is a bummer, but for a single-player game like this, not having DRM and it being published by EA, that is a pretty great feat, all things considered. Lastly, I do want to go over the various editions for the game. There's only two editions. The base game will be $59.99 on PC, and it will be $70 on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series, so yes, it will be $10 cheaper on PC. The standard edition, if you do pre-order it, you'll get the base game as well as the Blood Dragon Armor Cosmetic. The deluxe edition, on the other hand, 
is a $20 extra charge, and that'll get you the pre-order bonus, six weapon cosmetics, one armor, a warrior armor set for Rook, one mage armor set, one rogue armor set, and seven weapon for companions, and seven armor sets for companions as well. Nothing too major, and nothing that I would say is actually warranted a $20 purchase. It's not like a season pass or DLC content or anything like that. And hey, that's actually kind of pleasant to see. However, I think that does mitigate the necessity for picking up the deluxe edition. I also do want to note that there are a plethora of accessibility options and a wide variety of ways to tailor the game from a gameplay standpoint and a presentation standpoint uh, to your liking. You've got a total of five different difficulty presets. that Storyteller, where it'll be you just going in for the Story Keeper, a balanced combat experience that emphasizes party composition and equipment choices over reaction times. Adventure, a balanced experience that places equal emphasis on combat party composition and equipment choices. Underdog, here to be put to the limit, requiring strategic planning and tactical decisions. Nightmare, overwhelming battles that give a no Quarter, requires a mastery of combat equipment skills and game mechanics to survive selecting nightmare cannot be undone without starting a new playthrough then you do have unbound where you can customize all settings and tailor everything to your exact liking from a gameplay standpoint and even after selecting a difficulty there are more combat options available in the settings menu as well if you wish to make even further adjustments you can adjust elements like a parry timing aim assist strength or how aggressive enemies are on top of that you'll have a wide variety of adjustments being made with the UI and HUD at your disposal. Many elements of the HUD can be conditionally hidden or turned off entirely. For example, you can fully hide elements like Rook's health, the objective tracker, or the minimap. There are some accessibility aids for interference elements. For example, subtitles are fully customizable, allowing you to modify things like size, opacity, speaker names, and color, other settings, and audio aids to visual-only elements like incoming attack indicators. For anyone with vision deficiencies, there are full-screen color filters to improve visibility as well. There are a few more options regarding the game's visual effects for anyone who deals with motion sickness. There is a persistent dot option and motion blur can be fully turned off. The in-game camera shake can also be adjusted from 0 to 100%. All of the inputs are remappable for gameplay in Dragon Age The Veil Guard on both controller and keyboard for all platforms. Input sensitivity and dead zones are also customizable with sliding scales. There are some UI interactions that require an input to be held for a short period of time, but this can be changed to a tap instead. All of these options allow you to play the game however you want. On top of all of that, uh, some of the features that you will have full customization over, this includes audio with a variety there, controls, gameplay with combat, aim assist, aim snap, combat timing, enemy aggression, enemy damage, enemy health, enemy resistance, enemy vulnerability, prevent death, exploration, frequent auto-saving, library of co codex, glossary, and etc. Object glint distance, object glint visibility, object of um, a marker visibility, pause at any time, waypoint visibility, world and local maps available at all times, visual and UI adjustments as well as I mentioned with camera shake, depth of field, full screen, colorblind filters, hideable HUD elements with abilities, damage numbers, hints, minimap, objective trackers, player health, and tutorials, low health screen effects, motion blur, persistent dot options, range and melee threat indicators, subtitle advanced options, UI text, and so on and so forth. A lot of customization options will be at your disposal as far as accessibility goes, so that's always great to see and hopefully will be a standard in gaming across the board, and it has become more of a standard as far as accessibility is concerned. But that'll do it for me. Let me know your excitement level for Dragon Age The Veil Guard in the comments section down below. This is going to be one of the most divisive games of the year. And uh, I am incredibly, incredibly curious to see how this game does from a commercial standpoint. Because if this game doesn't do well, oh my goodness, for Bioware, it's going to be looking a little rough. Uh, given that they haven't put out a game that was unanimously praised in a long, long time. And sure, people will be excited about Mass Effect again to an extent. But man, this would be a gigantic blow. That's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.